friends, welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday with Westminster Presbyterian Church, Lincoln, Nebraska. We are grateful that you're worshiping with us virtually today. This Easter Sunday, we will hear the story of Christ's resurrection as we focus in on the wonderful world-changing announcement of Mary that I have seen the Lord. We'll hear more about that in our sermon and throughout our worship today. I do want to share one or two quick announcements. The first is to let you know that, yes, we will be resuming sanctuary worship here in person in just a few weeks on April the 18th. And in that service, we will be having certain, all the guidelines that we need to worship together safely. So we will be sharing more over the next two weeks in video and in announcements and throughout our publications here at the church about both guidelines and what to expect when you come. So I want to say a word of thanks to all of those who have volunteered to our worship task force in their great work over the recent months and to our session for thinking about the ways that we can worship safely together. So thank you to everyone who has participated in that work and those conversations. Next Sunday, we will be virtual and we will be featuring our creation celebration. It's our annual opportunity as we look ahead into the year and celebrate the good gift of God's creation in our world. That gift of creation that creates a sense of wonder within us. For a while, about seven years now, we have been an earth care congregation of the PCUSA. And next week, our special guest preacher, Dr. Reverend Dr. Ellen Skidmore of Forest Lake Presbyterian in Columbia, South Carolina, will share about her journey as a pastor and her congregation's journey as an earth care congregation themselves. I hope that we will be able to glean some insight into how we can live into that calling and our own commitment as we have said, yes, we will be an earth care congregation. So next week is creation celebration, and for the five weeks following, including that Sunday, we will be engaging each other in an adult ed hour on Zoom at 1030. If you need the link, you can contact the church office or look in the Evine. So now as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship God with great hope and joy on this Easter, let us turn our hearts and minds to God with praise. On this joyful Easter Sunday, let us celebrate the hope of Christ's resurrection together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us announce the good news. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, amen.
Jesus rising from the dead assures us that we too have been given new life. Let us turn towards God in a prayer of thanksgiving for the gift of new life this Easter Sunday. O Lord God, we give you thanks for the new life you raised up in us through the mystery of our baptism, the sorrow of the cross, the surprise of the empty tomb, the love that death could not destroy. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out upon us in baptism. Fill us with the joy of the resurrection so that we might be a living sign of your new heaven and new earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Lord who has given us new life into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Believe and share the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. Hey kids, as we hear, hear a story today, we'll hear about Mary Magdalene, who is a friend of Jesus. And on a day when they were sad because Jesus had died and left them, his disciples, starting with Mary, went to the tomb and found that the, it was opened up and he was not there. And a few minutes later, Mary encountered or met the risen Jesus who had defeated death. This is a story that creates such hope for us as Christians. It makes us hopeful because we can share that good news as well. So I want to challenge you this week as you go throughout school or as you go throughout life at home that you will live as a person who has met Jesus and is a friend of Jesus. You've met Jesus in scriptures and in worship and in all the ways that our church cares for you. So show your sense of care and your hope and your love to others this week. That's my hope and that is the joy of Easter, that we are saved by God's grace, loved by God and sent by God to go and tell or announce the good news as well. So now let us pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our family. Thank you, God, for your love in Jesus. Amen.
As we prepare to hear God's Word read and proclaimed on this Easter Sunday, let us pray. Holy One, you come to us with power beyond all knowing. You lift all things out of the dust. You breathe love into our very being. You call us into communion with you, and you claim victory over death. Open our eyes and our hearts, O God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in the hearing of your word we may receive new life as we hear the announcement of the risen Lord. Amen. Throughout this Lenten season, we focused on one simple theme or topic within every scripture that we've looked at week after week in our sermons. Focusing on one simple concept or idea can help us as we navigate an increasingly confusing world full of noise and news feeds and notifications. So on this Easter Sunday, you are invited to hear the telling of Mary's announcement, to hear the telling of the story of Christ's resurrection from the tomb and from the dead. So with hope, in that resurrection. Let us now hear John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know what they have done with him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, our simple focus in this story on Easter Sunday is the power of Mary's announcement about the resurrection. But first, it might be helpful for us to consider and name the wide variety of announcements that you and I experience in daily life. We can start even with the announcement of a child's birth on Facebook and in the church Evine and that highly anticipated family group text. Moving to school age where a teacher might announce in front of the whole class that you have been called to the principal's office. I'll admit even Pastor Chris has experienced that feeling of dread that you get walking to the principal's office unsure whether you've been summoned for a good deed or for something you did wrong. For older youth and adults, it seems as if announcements find us all day long. Whether it's a score update about the Huskers game, a news alert that a tornado warning has been issued, a phone notification that a friend has passed your step count in a Fitbit challenge, breaking news about a vote in Congress, or a calendar reminder of the PTO meeting you forgot, or an overnight text sharing the good news that a direct deposit made it into the bank. In 2021, even after the strange year of a pandemic, we are a society that is very familiar with announcements and announcing. Announcements can cause a wide range of emotions in us too, anxiety, as we wait the announcing of test results from a doctor. Grief, when we learn that someone has died. On the other hand, joy that a scan revealed the cancer is in remission. Or hope with the email announcing that you're now eligible for a COVID vaccination. In many ways, our lives are not only filled with announcements, but at times our very well-being seems to hinge on someone else making an announcement to or for us. So on this Easter Sunday, as people very familiar with announcements, I believe that we just heard the story of what might be the most important announcement in the history of humankind when Mary announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. With that announcement from Mary Magdalene, countless lives have been found hope in Christ's resurrection and the promise of new life. With Mary's announcement, you and I today know the fellowship and care that comes with genuine Christian community. With Mary's announcement, you and I can begin to value the teachings of Jesus as those teachings which have the most importance in our lives and can be the very foundation of our lives. With Mary's announcement, I have seen the Lord. The whole world was changed, and our lives can be changed as well. But to reach Mary's world-changing announcement, we need to back up in the story we heard from John. On our Easter Sunday scripture passage, we have a unique start in a place with overtones of uncertainty. 
those come in the early morning darkness of the very first Easter, after a Saturday full of weeping for Jesus. Before sunrise and birdsong break the day, before the discovery of the empty tomb, and before Mary's encounter with Jesus and her announcement, the Easter story starts with a tone of uncertainty. And out of that uncertainty, out of that place of grief, the Sunday morning pre-dawn turns into a place of discovery. Mary approaches the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid after his crucifixion on that Friday, only to find the stone covering that entrance to be rolled away despite its weight. She does what I imagine most of us might have done, running to the other disciples, the others who followed and loved Jesus too, and they discuss what could have happened. Was it vandals or grave robbers? Was it the Romans? Could it have been one of us? And so they run to the tomb at top speed. But after surveying the scene, even with a glimmer of hope and belief, Peter and the other disciple just head home. Surprisingly, no one makes the connection of the times that Jesus talked openly about his body being raised from the dead directly and metaphorically. The disciples just didn't get it when he said it, and they don't get it after surveying the tomb. So the men head home. They may have a sense of belief, but I imagine they were still disappointed. But Mary, Mary remained. So as she weeps in mourning and in confusion, Mary encounters these mysterious messengers in the tomb who help her name the cause of her weeping, that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. Things are not as they were expected. And right then, Mary turns around and encounters a person that she assumes must be the gardener. Perhaps that was because her eyes were full of tears from crying or because she was simply tired after a restless night. She doesn't recognize the true identity of this person as it speaks, echoing that question of the messengers, why are you weeping? And so Mary, in response, in her grief, repeats that they do not know where Jesus' body could be and that if you have done something with it, let me know. But then, when the mysterious figure speaks again, it says the one word that matters most in that moment. It speaks Mary's name out of that dark morning. Mary, teacher, she responds in Hebrew. Instead of lingering in the garden, holding close to this experience of the risen Lord, Jesus gives her one last instruction. Go. Go and tell the others. So as the sun begins to rise over the hills in Jerusalem, and Mary runs again to find the other disciples, those followers of Jesus, she runs to tell them about her experience to tell them about hope being born anew in this world. And as Mary Magdalene arrives, she announces, I have seen the Lord. And from there, we know where the story goes. Mary's announcement changes the world. It changes the world as the disciples went on to share that news with friends as they had their own encounters of Jesus. It changed the world as it was passed down to younger generations. Changed the world as those generations were empowered by the gift of the Spirit. Changed the world as the church would grow and expand and throughout the years on down to us today. And so we are left asking the question, where does that leave us? How might we reclaim the power of Mary's announcement when we feel bombarded with constant notifications and announcements of our own? 
Well, I believe that each of us can find a deep sense of calling and purpose in Mary's announcement, in her very act of making that announcement, because it can inspire us to announce the good news of hope, faith, justice, peace, and love that Jesus taught and lived out and that is assured in the signs of the resurrection. We can even look to moments of progress in our nation to see how Mary's announcement has inspired other important voices. One was the 19th century abolitionist Maria Stewart. She was a powerful voice in the call to end slavery in the United States. Even though she personally faced ridicule and abuse and silencing for speaking out on behalf of freedom and equity, as a black woman of her day. So Maria Stewart once asked this question, did not Mary Magdalene first declare the resurrection of Christ from the dead? She asked that question as a response to those who were trying to silence her voice. Maria Stewart found inspiration for using her voice for good to bring flourishing and wholeness to others. So in our own day, as we find hope in Christ's resurrection, you and I are called to announce, I have seen the Lord. Not just on Easter Sunday, not just as we raise candles on Christmas Eve, not just when it feels convenient with our work or with our busy schedules. Friends, as an outcome of this Easter story in John, we are invited to carry the power and the promise and the hope of Mary's announcements to our schedules, to our work, to our school, to our world, in word and in deed. Now, the call to announcing doesn't mean that we're exempt from experiencing suffering or doubt or difficult days and seasons of life. In fact, it means that we should be incredibly mindful of such moments in our own lives and in the lives around us. Why? Because again, at at its very heart, Mary's announcement is one that seeks to bring new life, flourishing, and wholeness to the other disciples and to this world by sharing her experience of the risen Lord. So if you are experiencing weariness today after a year's pandemic, if you are experiencing grief or loss or confusion, know that it's okay. It's okay to experience those spaces precisely because we are human. And if today you are experiencing the joy of resurrection and the hope of new life, then know that it is your calling to announce the good news of flourishing, flourishing and wholeness in your own experience of the risen Lord. So here's the last challenge for us, believers and seekers alike. We hear this story and find hope in His promise. When we are at our best, when we are ready to act, that we are called to carry forward the message of Mary's announcement into and even with our very lives. Are you in elementary school? Then go announce by talking to the kid who always sits alone at lunch. Are you a healthcare worker? Then go announce by listening to your patients' anxieties and treating them accordingly. Are you a CEO or a president? Then go announce by treating your employees fairly. Are you a teacher or professor? Then go announce by showing care for your students when they express need. Are you a retiree? Then go announce by calling a friend or a family member who has been feeling lonely or in grief. Or go and announce by volunteering here at the church. And so if you find yourself on this Easter Sunday yearning for a community that will worship God with the joy found in Mary's announcement, a community that will work for the flourishing and wholeness of our neighbors, a community that will care for one another, and will announce the good news with integrity. Know that today our Westminster Church family is being called, no matter what our stage of life,
to go where we can and to announce, I have seen the Lord. To announce it in big words and small words, in big deeds and little deeds, throughout Lincoln and in our world. So on this Easter Sunday 2021, know that we are invited, even called, to joyfully announce the good news of Easter. I have seen the Lord. I have experienced new life. I find hope in the resurrection. Alleluia. Amen. Let us join our voices together in hope, saying that what we believe, using the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life everlasting. Amen.
please pray with me. Heavenly Father, on this holy of most holy days, we give thanks for the risen Lord, who gives us hope and peace to all who believe in him. We give thanks that when Mary Magdalene saw the empty tomb and was confused, that her eyes were opened and she heard the transformed Jesus speak. We pray for us to also understand and have our eyes open to Jesus, the teacher among us in acts and deeds of encouragement and kindness. God, we pray for people in this world struggling for freedom and for basic human needs. We pray for those who believed but strayed from your teachings. Lead the lost souls back to Christ. Most gracious God, walk with those who are suffering the loss of family and friends through illness, accidents, tornadoes, and shootings. Help them to remember the good times of hugs and laughter and know their loved ones are now with the risen Lord. We thank you for watching over our community as restrictions are lifted. Jesus, as the process unfolds, continue to, te to teach us tolerance and patience with our fellow neighbors. We give thanks for your guidance of Westminster's Worship Task Force and our session members as they make plans for safe in-person worship again in our beautiful sanctuary. Lord, you gave us Jesus. You sent him to us as a teacher to show us how to live in peace, grace, and love. So we give thanks. Let us continue to follow him so we too will be risen. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, set before us is the joyful feast of God's people. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear a story that happened when Jesus was resurrected on that first Sunday. And as Jesus takes bread, eating with his disciples, and breaks it at giving thanks to God, those disciples' eyes are opened and they know exactly who he is. They experience the hope of Christ's resurrection in that moment. It brings them back to the table from just a few nights before when they celebrated the Last Supper with Jesus. And they have hope. It reminds them as their eyes are opened wide to memories of the Lord's Supper that they had shared, open to joy in knowing that their friend and Savior was with them again, open them to the calling to go and share and announce that good news in their own lives as well. Friends, set before us, this is not Westminster's table. It's not a Presbyterian table. It is God's table set with the feast that fills us and sends us to share the announcement as well. So friends here at this table, know that whether you have had communion over and over, if it's been a long time or even if it's the first time, you are invited to celebrate the feast of the Lord today. So friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds with prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious God, we are truly thankful for the beauty of your creation and your steadfast love. For when we turned our backs to you in sin, you did not abandon us. Yet you sent prophets for correction. And in time, you sent your own Son, Jesus Christ. God, our Redeemer, we praise you that in Christ Jesus you reveal your love. As Jesus taught those who would hear, healed those who believed and received all who sought him. So we glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. As Christ was betrayed, arrested, and died on the cross, so too was he raised defeating death and bringing new life. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And so God, our sustainer, by your spirit, may the bread we break and the cup we bless be a blessing to us, filling us spiritually so that we might share in the love of Christ in this world. Help us to share and announce that love through caring words, righteous actions, and open hearts. So we pray all this with joy and hope in the resurrection. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the Apostle Paul tells us that on the night of his arrest, our Savior sat at table with his disciples, and after the meal he took the bread, and giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Friends, let us partake in the bread of Christ. And in the same way, Christ took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord, particularly on this Easter Sunday, until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Now let us partake with joy in Christ's cup. Friends, let us pray. Living God, Jesus Christ is risen indeed. In Christ you have filled our lives with your love. So send us from this table in this communion in our homes to love you, our God, wherever we are in this world, and to love our neighbors, however we encounter them. Give us the courage and the hope, and equip us to announce the good news of our own encounter with the risen Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, as our service concludes, be encouraged to live in hope and to announce the great news that can change our world. I have seen the Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. And wherever you may be and whatever you may find yourself doing in the coming week, know that the presence of our risen Lord through the Spirit is with you. And so be encouraged that the grace of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ may go with you and uphold you each and every day. Amen.